Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 65 of Wednesday Night Live. We'll let some more people come in. Hi, Tricia. Hi, Lewis. Welcome. Well, I signed in a little bit early because we have a guest on tonight, so I can figure out how to bring uh, my guest on. Hopefully that won't be too difficult. And <coughs> Tricia, um, where are you? Where do you live? To type it into the chat box. Okay, we'll wait as some more people come into the room. Welcome, everybody. Just going to move my screen around a little bit. Oh, okay, nice. Plano, Texas, nice. Okay, we'll wait for some more people to come in and we'll get started once our guest joins. Hey, Terry. Hey, Linda. Welcome. Waiting for our guest. Tonight we'll have our first guest. Took, took us 65 weeks, but we're going to have our first guest tonight. She should be signing in very soon. Hey, Shirley. Hey, Hey, Helen, welcome, welcome everybody. Give our guest a few more minutes to sign in and we will get started. Okay, just moving my screen around here. All right, move things around here. Well, we're waiting for Catherine. Um, while we're waiting for Catherine, um, I'll read her bio and then hopefully she'll, uh, she'll join. So tonight we're gonna be talking about um, algae actually. And algae is one of the uh, chlorella specifically is one of the supplements I've been taking for the longest period of time. As many of you, of you know, I have a fascination and interest in um, Asian food um, and nutrition. And I came across uh, chlorella, which is, which is a type of algae. And I was really very interested in it. Um, and I came across um, it in Japan, actually, as where I, I, I knew about it before. I knew about spirulina. I, I tried taking spirulina for some time, didn't really tolerate spirulina well, but chlorella, I happened to really um, felt like I thrived with it. And uh, when I got off the plane in Japan, uh, I saw a big billboard right in the airport, like a huge billboard for chlorella. And I, I was really fascinated that a company could really be so influential, uh, or I guess be so popular that they would advertise it in the in the airport. Um, and then I started to look into it a lot, a little bit further, and I was really amazed at um, all the all the benefits of chlorella. And and then up until then, starting from then, I was really consistent in taking it. And then I came across some studies for chlorella specifically about how it removed certain toxins, and that that really um, furthered my interest even more. So it, it's something that um, has, has been something I've taken for quite some time. Hello, Dave, welcome. Sharon, uh, welcome. All right, well, I'm not sure where our guest is. Um, see if she sent me uh, an, a note and um, doesn't look like she's showing up. Uh, which is fine. Um, I could certainly 
speak on a whole host of things if, if she doesn't. I will give her another uh, couple minutes. And then if not, uh, I'm gonna talk about what's called mental, Im <clears throat> mental imagery, which is something that I was going to discuss next week. Um, however, um, it looks like our guest may or may not be uh, showing up, uh, though I did get confirmation. So let me read her bio. And then hopefully when I finish reading her bio, she'll be here. So Catherine started uh, Energy Bits after her sister was diagnosed with breast cancer and advised by her oncologist that an alkaline diet would help her heal. Catherine immediately sprung into action to help her sister research alkaline foods. And in the process, she discovered algae. When Catherine learned that algae was the most alkaline plant-based nutrient dense food in the world and had been used for 50 years in Asia to improve health and longevity, she knew she had discovered something big and yes, her sister fully recovered. As Catherine dug into the science of algae, she learned it had 64% protein, 40 minerals and vitamins and was endorsed by the United Nations and NASA as the most nutrient dense food in the world. She also discovered that there were 100,000 studies documenting its long list of benefits and it was the most sustainable eco-friendly crop in the world. And yet algae remained virtually unknown outside of Asia. How could this be possible? Catherine knew algae could be a game changer for our health, our children and our world if she only could convince people it wasn't weird. And so Energy Bits was born. It took Catherine 10 years to bring algae into the mainstream and build Energy Bits into a national company. Um, a handful will satisfy your hunger, help give you steady energy, and help ensure your nutritional needs are met. All this from a food that has one ingredient, no chemicals, caffeine, sugar, or processing, um, and is the most sustainable, self, safe, eco-friendly crop in the world, algae. All right, so let's see, and Catherine is here, so let's bring her on and, um, and let's chat. Okay. All right, hi, Catherine. I think uh, I don't, I, I don't hear you. Here we go. Okay, hey, Catherine. Can you see me too? <laughs> yes, yes. And I, can everyone see both of us? Um, hopefully, hopefully you can see both of us on the screen. It looks like it's working okay. Um, if some of the people on the call could, just verify that you can see both of us. That would be great. All right. Well, so where are you, Catherine? I can't. I can't. Well, I, I'm based in Boston, Massachusetts, and okay. uh, nature is slowly gracing us with summer. Although every day is is unpredictable. Uh, it was 60 degrees here today and 90 last week. So you know, I'd rather be in Florida with you. <laughs> yeah, I know you spend some time down here on occasion. So yeah. Yeah, I'll be down there in the fall. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome to uh, Wednesday Night Live. This is our 65th episode. And uh, believe it or not, you're the first uh, guest we've actually had. Oh, gosh, I'm honored. Thank <laughs> you so much. I'll try to make it worth your while. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm not sure I, I did catch a little the tail end of your introduction, but um, I want your community to know that I have uh, 11 years of research on algae nutrition under my belt. And um, I'm delighted to share as much of it as I can with you in a brief period, um, because it's a game changer for your health along with your miracle noodles. And uh, both of which, by the way, uh, originated in Japan. So they're doing something right over there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was, I was telling everyone that, you know, I had discovered it and then was amazed at how popular it was in Japan. And that was one of the things that, that interested me. And, you know, we both sort of, have found products in Japan that, you know, are very popular there, but unfortunately haven't become popular outside of, of Asia. Yeah. And, and, and people, I'm on podcasts all the time and people ask me regularly, why don't people in North America know about algae? And, and there's a couple of reasons. First of all, it's not grown here. Not much yet. Anyways, 99.9% uh, .9 of all algae is grown in Asia. So that's Japan, Taiwan, China, uh, India. Um, um, uh, and so we didn't grow up 
seeing it growing, you know, we have corn and wheat and you drive by and you see that and that's quite normal and you see the trucks taking it to the mill to make it into bread. And in Japan and all those other Asian countries, it's quite normal for them to see a truckload of algae on its way to get dried. So, so first of all, it's not part of what I call it our vernacular. We just didn't grow up with it. So it's completely unknown. Although I will point out there's a lot of other really great food groups and categories that were um, are, have slowly been introduced into America that have been existence in other countries for centuries, like you know uh, chia seed or matcha or recently um, kiwa um, and you know things like uh, collagen. So um, so I tell people algae is new to you, um, but it's not new. So first of all, we didn't grow up with it. Second of all. It's not only grown in Asia, 99% of it is sold in Asia. So um, all the companies, the company that grows ours for us, they're 50 years old. And the, um, the algae farms are not tiny. I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn my backdrop off so I can show you some teaching materials um, uh, uh, here. So here is a picture of an algae farm. This one's spirulina, uh, which no, is a little can't, narrow. We but can't see. You, oh, you can't see? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just I clicked the wrong button. There, there you go. All right, yeah. sorry about that. So um, as you can see, th this is not something you just grow in your backyard, although you could, I suppose. Uh, these farms are about 10 times the size of Olympic stadiums. It's a very sophisticated growing process. They grow it in the water. It's fresh water, by the way. It's the other thing people I need people to know. This doesn't come from the ocean. There is algae in the ocean, but um, not the stuff that you grow that you consume from us or any other company. It's all harvested in fresh water. So there are no ocean toxins. And if you see any articles about toxic algae, I can promise you that it came from an ocean or a lake or a river. So it's very, very safe. And then we air, we air dry it without heat to preserve the enzymes, but it's all grown there and it's all eaten there. So they have no motivation to try to, or not until recently to you know, educate people. And um, they do, some of the companies have started selling it and they've been selling it here for, you know, 50 years, but they haven't changed the packaging to make it easy for people to understand. And so I'm as not only the chief sci um, scientific officer and the founder, but I design all of our packaging. So for example, spirulina um, gives you energy. So I thought, well, let's call our spirulina energy bits and it's pretty and easy to understand and also build your skin and hair. So I made a second spirulina and called it beauty bit. So it's pretty obvious what it does for you. And, and we're gonna talk about some of these benefits in a few minutes. Chlorella is a wellness algae and it pulls out toxins. It helps you recover from sickness or sports or drinking even. So we call our chlorella recovery bits. So, cause it helps people understand what it is that they're buying. Um, and we're the first company in the world to do that, by the way. Um, everybody else still packages it like it's just a supplement and doesn't help you at all. And we're also very committed to teaching people. And I'm the chief scientific officer, so I've written about 500 articles. And so we're here to help you understand what algae is because our food supply is so damaged. Our soils are so useless. Our food is, is imported from so far away that what you put on your plate these days looks nothing like what your grandparents used to eat. And you're getting fiber and calories, but you're not getting nutrition. And almost all of our illnesses these days are because our bodies don't have the nutrients they need and they have too many toxins. So I know you, Jonathan, and I are focused on helping people get the nutrients they need to at least help rebalance their body. Yeah, so we've spoken quite a bit over the last year talking about nutrient density and the fact that our soils are depleted and, and the vegetables that we have are not as nutrient dense as they used to be. So maybe this would be a good time to sort of talk about the concepts of nutrient density and how they relate to algae. Yeah, well, this will be a great little image for people um, because uh, we found that a lot of people either don't have, don't like vegetables or they don't have time to buy them, put them in the fridge, clean them, cook them, eat them, and maybe their husbands or kids won't eat them. So here's the solution. 
because uh, our little tablets are about the, are the size of a baby aspirin. And by the way, I eat these all day. I'm, I'm not just the owner of this company. I live on these things. <laughs> I probably have a hundred a day. You don't have to, even if you took five a day, you'd be in much better shape. But if you don't like vegetables or you don't have time to shop, cook or clean for them, each one of these tiny tablets is so nutrient dense that it has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables that you didn't have to cook, clean, or eat. If you can swallow water, you can get all that in that. So it's, it's as nutrient dense as you're ever gonna get. In fact, we sell our algae in bags on our website. And I, uh, we have a quote from NASA, who by the way, feeds algae to the astronauts and has for 50 years. We have a quote from them that says, one gram of algae has the same nutrition as a thousand grams of fruits and vegetables. So it's one to a thousand. There is nothing in the world that has more nutrient density than algae. So I took that quote and I did the math and we sell these bags with a thousand tablets on our website. So each one of our bags has the same nutrition as 551 pounds of vegetables. Now that's at $3 a pound for organic, that would have been $1,600. So it's what I call efficient nutrition. And it saves you um, time because you didn't have to do all those grocery trips and you didn't have to clean them and cook them. And um, lots of mothers are quite concerned about their children getting the nutrients they need and rightfully so. So um, kids, you, know, if you, you don't have to worry about them anymore. Just give them one or two of these a day and they'll get all the green nutrition and 40 other vitamins and minerals. There's 40 vitamins and minerals in algae spirulina and chlorella have different profiles and they, I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of the benefits, but um, uh, they are unbelievable. And they also have the highest protein in the world. And this is, all this is scientifically documented, by the way, it's in the National Institute of Health. There's almost a hundred thousand studies documenting algae, but spirulina has been endorsed by the United Nations since 1974 as the answer to world hunger because, drum roll, it has three times the amount of protein as steak, three times more than fish, chicken, it's 64% protein. So, and it's the most eco-friendly sustainable crop in the world. So spir um, uh, the United Nations has used both spirulina and chlorella for decades. They used chlorella at Chernobyl to pull out uh, radiation from people who were exposed to the nuclear disaster um, it, we work with biological dentists who use it to pull out mercury after they take out fillings. Um, it is the best way to build your immune system because that is all the nutrients your immune system. It has the highest concentration of chlorophyll. I see, jo uh, Jonathan, you're standing in front of a beautiful green backdrop. I don't know if it's real or, or uh, a backdrop, but um, everybody knows that chlorophyll is a green pigment that makes plants green and it's very nutrient dense for you. Well, algae has a thousand times more chlorophyll than greens, or it even has 25 times more than liquid chlorophyll. So it's very, very high and rich in chlorophyll. And your chlorophyll, just to show you how important chlorophyll is, you're gonna love this. I'm sure nobody knows this, but you can go on any science on the, on the website to confirm this. So here's the chemical composition of your blood. And here's the chemical composition of chlorophyll. Do you notice that they're virtually identical? That's because they are. The only difference is that in your blood, you have um, iron in the middle, which carries oxygen and in um, chlorophyll, it's magnesium. That's why for centuries, they have used chlorophyll for the injured or sick because it builds your blood. Yeah, we, we've uh, spoken about that actually before. It is, it's an amazing thing. So let's go back to um, nutrient density uh, a bit. So we, we've um, established that it's close to 65% protein per, per, per calorie, I guess. It has minerals, but I imagine it has, fi does it, it has fiber as well? Uh, well, just the chlorella. Like I said, they're quite yeah. different. Um, yeah. Spirulina which is a blue-green algae, is technically a bacteria. It does not have a cellulose wall. So there is no fiber in spirulina. Uh, by the way, there's no carbs in either of them either. Chlorella has the hardest cell wall in the plant kingdom. 
and that hard cell wall attaches to toxins. We can talk more about that later, but it does have fiber and okay. it also has the high chlorophyll and it pulls out toxins. So it's been used for IBS, Crohn's, any kind of gut health issue and that fiber contributes to that. Okay, and it also it also does have some fatty acids in it, does it not? Oh yes, uh, well, again, so both of them have them, but spirulina has more. Um, it has uh, omega-3, it has um, something called GLA, which is technically a omega-6, but because we don't um, process it, this, these are raw foods, it behaves like an omega-3. Now GLA, which stands for gamma linoleic acid, uh, is important for your brain health. And the only place that has more GLA in it than spirulina is mother's breast milk. And the reason why there's so much in mother's breast milk is because the baby's brain doubles or triples in size in the first couple of years. So that GLA is essential. But you know, we, we all need GLA. Um, you can get it from borage oil as well, but it's much more concentrated in, in spirulina. So that's why we encourage people to buy both of the algae because they do completely different things. Spirulina between the high essential fatty acids, the high protein, it satisfies your hunger and it gives you energy, which is why we call it energy bits. Now chlorella just doesn't satisfy your hunger and it does not give you energy. So most people take their spirulina in the morning, if they're doing intermittent fasting, if, as a meal replacement to lose weight, or just it's so easy to travel with these tablets. And we also sell them in you know pouches with 30 tablets. If you don't want to buy the whole bag. So, so if you're traveling or you're somewhere, you're at a meeting in your car and you don't want to eat carbs uh, and you don't have time to cook anything, you just pop a few of these down and, and your hunger is gone within seconds because it gets into your bloodstream so quickly because there's no cellulose wall. Um, so they, most people take this in the morning, afternoon, before a workout, and because it is a detoxing algae. Uh, and when you sleep, is, that's when your body repairs and, and detoxes. So most people take the chlorella at night, but you could take either of them any time of day. So I got off a little track, sorry, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. interestingly, I mean, I find the chlorella actually to be, to be satisfying. Um, when I take it, it. It's, it's, it's satisfying, but it doesn't have that um, trigger for uh, that the spirulina is known for. Um, and, and I personally actually eat more, way more chlorella than spirulina. I just prefer it. And I actually eat mine, by the way. Um, most people swallow their tablets or put them in smoothies. I would urge you not to eat the spirulina, not because you can't, because you can but it's very chewy and very earthy. Uh, and most people do not like the flavor. However, the chlorella, which is the green one, when you mix it with sea salt or almonds or um, macadamia nuts are the best, it's a, it's a tasty snack. And so um, if you can learn to eat it, it's much, it's much nicer. You're not feeling like you're eating, taking a supplement. Yeah, I, I tend to use chlorella actually when, when I'm seeing patients, um, I, I start at 8.30 and I go until around three and I usually don't eat lunch. And I usually just take a couple handfuls of chlorella um, and that's sort of my lunch and I'm fine yeah. for the yeah. rest of the day. And yeah. it's, it's a great thing. I mean, you, I guess it sounds like spirulina would be a better thing for that, but for people who are, you know, who realize, a lot of times people realize that they've had enough food to eat, but that they're still hungry. Yeah, and yeah. I think that this is a good, a good snack in a sense to, you know, to calm the hunger all the while adding, you know, a really nutrient dense food. Yeah. That's a really good point. And, and um, we all have the, uh, these foods that trigger us and that's hard to stop eating. And, uh, and I have a few of them, one of them is popcorn. <laughs> but uh, so what my go-to is a, like, just like you said, a handful of the chlorella with some sea salt on it. And it just stops my cravings in its tracks and re cleans my palate and I, my body loves it. So it, I just, I, I can get back on track is probably the best way. And we all have something that triggers us. You're either a salty person or a sweet person, but it doesn't matter which way you go the chlorella, because it's chewable and tastes pretty good with almonds or I, my, my, I've been eating, I've discovered something in Whole Foods, it's, um, you'll laugh, 
It's dill pickle flavored almonds. And oh my God, with the chlorella, it's off the charts. And I've also discovered um, pistachios. They have all these different flavors. There's a salt and vinegar one I'm, I'm chowing down now, but they all taste better with the chlorella. <laughs> So we met at the Metabolic Health Summit, which is which was a conference that you know talks a lot about the the benefits of metabolic flexibility, which we've spoken about many times over the last year. Um, and so I guess this is given that it's all protein with no carbs. Do you have a lot of customers that are using it, you know, during fasting protocols? Or... Oh, absolutely, um, fasting protocols. It, um... Keto, we're very big in the keto community. In fact, uh, probably any within a couple of weeks, there, there's a movie that was filmed in February that we were invited to be part of called um, a Reversed. It's actually the second um, set of um, movies they did a couple of few years ago. And they took a bunch of people with diabetes to, I think, Costa Rica, and they fed them a keto diet and our algae, and they gave them a fitness routine, and it stops it reversed their diabetes. So, uh, and we've worked with um, diabetes um, organizations, um, fundraisers, they've done, you know, cycling fundraisers in Napa Valley, and we provide the, both the two algae to the, the teams. Um, and uh, same thing, they reversed their diabetes. This is very powerful food, not just nutrient dense, but the fact that it's zero carbs it's also the original life on earth. So it's, it's paleo, ancestral, keto, low carb, low sugar, low calorie. There's only one calorie per tablet. Um, it doesn't matter what lifestyle or diet you prefer. The algae tablets fit into all of them. And I don't know anything else that you could say that about. <laughs> yeah. And the truth is, unfortunately, that a fair number of people who are on a keto diet are not getting the nutrient density that, that is really consistent with optimal health. So, yeah. you know, anything that can help that is obviously going to be, to be beneficial. Well, I don't know if any of your listeners are keto, but one, there's a couple of things that happen. First of all, you're not eating a lot of fiber because they don't want the carbs. So you tend to get constipated and the chlorella is uh, a, um, it triggers homeostasis, or not homeostasis, uh, peristalsis. So um, it, um, not, it's a combination of the fiber and the chlorophyll, but so that, that eliminates that problem. Um, and of course, you know, when you're not eating fiber or chlorophyll, you're missing an entire food category that has been documented to build your immune system. Um, one of the things people get is what they call a keto flu when they're switching over from carb to fat based. And I think a lot of people, there's so much research that's been coming out about keto and metabolic health and the me it, it's a great thing to do for illness, but for a lifestyle, they're recommending you cycle in and cycle out of keto. It, it's just not something that you should think about doing forever because it's, as you said, it just is missing so many nutrients. Yeah, it's for sure. Yeah. Lisa is asking about folic acid, but I, I don't think it has any of that in it, but you know, I don't think I know what that is. Yeah. Folic acid is um, it, it's, it's like a, the, the original fulvic acid was isolated from um, like soil, basically, the, a, a collection of minerals from soil. I even have a uh, bottle of uh, fulvic acid, oddly enough, right here. Um, but it's it's another way of getting, you know, a fair amount of minerals in um, into your diet. But um, yeah, not, 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 it's, it's a different, different kind of thing. So yeah, well, I will tell you, there's magnesium, potassium, there's all the electrolytes, um, magnesium is critical, um, um, calcium, um, and algae is so rich with nutrients, they're using it for fertilizer, because it, it populates the soils back with health. They're using it to feed fish. A lot of these fish farms are they're, they found are very acidic and it's because the sorry for the you know language but the fish poop has been it's been killing the life in the ocean where they have the fish farms and it washes up on shore and kills the vegetation there too so they've um they've been feeding the fish algae and the problem went away the other thing that's really interesting is you've probably heard with livestock they're the biggest contributor to you know um, methane which is damaging the ozone layer 15% of methane comes from cow farts. 
and they did a test and they fed the uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, cattle algae problem solved, Not, just completely went away. The reason why they're having these methane farts, if you want to call them, is because they feed them corn, which is acidic to the body and causes an acidic environment, which causes gas and boom, there you go. So it's not just for you, it's also for the oceans, it's for the soil, it's for the uh, any animal, anything that lives on earth can benefit from algae, including your pets, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I would give my dog uh, chlorella and, and she loved it actually. She thought of it as a, as a treat actually. Totally, they'll yeah. love you for it. You I, could, I could actually shake, shake the bag and you know she learned that that was the chlorella and she, and she would come and uh, and eat it yeah for sure yeah. Yeah. so um, lisa's asking about marine phytoplankton and what well, what's sort of the difference is and, and that well, sort of thing yeah marine phytoplankton is is in the family of algae so um algae is uh is a, it was the first life on earth and there's two main categories one is called macroalgae and the other one is microalgae. So macroalgae is the big stringy stuff that washes up on shore, also known as kelp and dulse, uh, seaweed, uh, all very good for you. Lots of great fiber, lots of iodine because it comes from the ocean, but virtually no nutrients. I've started using kelp noodles from a fabulous little company. It, it's great because there's virtually no calories, but it's, it holds the sauce. Um, microalgae, there's probably 50,000 strains of microalgae in the oceans, the lakes, the rivers, but most of them are, as I said, are toxic to humans. Phytoplankton is a microalgae. It's, it, it's, uh, and, and so it's, it's sort of used interchangeably um, and you can buy phytoplankton, you know, quite honestly, I don't know what strains are in phytoplankton, but it's, um, phytoplankton is basically what the fish eat, it, 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 but it, it could well be spirulina. They don't really, I don't really know of any companies that specify what strain of algae is in the phytoplankton. All I can tell you though, is that spirulina and chlorella are harvested in fresh water as a farmed food crop. Phytoplankton tends to be wild. And I just be cautioning you on anything that's wild because you can't control what's in the oceans. and algae absorbs whatever's in the ocean, but phytoplankton is another algae in the micro, um, in the micro algae category. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sharon's asking about um, whether you need to be concerned about uh, too high intake of vitamins, but I guess, you know, I guess my answer would be, this is a whole food. So it's probably not going to be, you know, a concern. What, what would yeah. you say? Well, that's exactly right. Um, and actually algae, both spirulina and chlorella are what's called adaptogens. So they instinctively can tell whether your body needs the nutrients that are in them. And if your body doesn't need them, they simply don't absorb them and you pee them out. But most people do need the nutrients. And I will draw your attention to the fact about iron. A lot of iron, um, a lot of men are concerned about iron. And I would urge you never to take iron supplements, which are made from what's called organic materials, which are basically rocks. Because when you, if you don't get your nutrients from food, um, they, uh, they're modified somehow. They're extra they don't exist like that in nature. Your body doesn't know how to recognize them. So you can get to toxicity. When you get your nutrients from food, um, it, it, I, I don't, it's almost impossible, certainly from the algae, to reach any kind of toxicity state. And then the 80, 80 to 100 years of research that's been done on the two algae with 100,000 studies in the NIH library, not a single one has ever identified any toxicity issue. Now, someone also just asked, how many do I take? Well, I love this stuff. And I, uh, I take probably about maybe 10 uh, spirulina, the energy bits a day. And I only do that because I know it has a different nutrient profile. But I eat at least a hundred. So, now I'm not suggesting anybody else do this. It's just that A, I don't have to pay for mine. B, I love them so much. Um, uh, so I, you know, it's a main food for me. I, I do still grocery shop and I still do eat mostly plant-based, you know, vegetables. And as I mentioned, my kelp noodles, but um, I'm, a, I'm busy too. And so I don't have time to cook all the time. 
And uh, I just love the flavor and I know what these nutrients do for me. And I now, I never used to, but I do now re uh, reveal my age to people because I want you to understand that this stuff works. So I'll be turning 65 in a couple of months. And I swear, I look younger, I feel better, I sleep like a baby, then I, everything is better than it was 10 years ago. And I have, I started the company because my sister had breast cancer and my oncologist told her to change her diet to an alkaline diet. So I helped her with that. But, um, but I, I am the poster child for algae. <laughs> so I just want everybody to feel as good as I do. Um, I, we're, just, we're going to a big beauty show in August and we were, I was writing some new material and I said, hey, this is a replacement for Botox. I, you know, <laughs> you know, if your skin is nourished, it protects the elastin, the collagen. By the way, it has the same amount of protein as collagen, except it's a sustainable product. Um, so um, you know, what you put in your body affects your skin more than what you put on your body. So, um, uh, and yeah, I know about algae cal, but let me tell you about algae cal, okay? They use, they're basically a calcium supplement and they are made of calcium from algae. They are this not- is, Yeah, I just wanna, just wanna state someone's asking about a specific uh, yeah. supplement. I saw the question pop up. We did a research piece and I'd be, and, uh, and um, Jonathan, I'll send you the, 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 the piece that I wrote comparing algae to algae cal. It's a bit misleading because it's not algae in there. It's just calcium that's in there extracted from algae. So you think you're not getting algae when you take algae cal, you're getting calcium. And by the way, do not take calcium supplements. People take calcium because they think that it builds your bones. Nope it actually makes them more brittle. And I have all the science to prove that to you. What makes your bones strong are minerals and protein, not calcium. Please don't take any more calcium supplements. <laughs> you do have to be careful with, uh, with calcium as a supplement for sure. But Linda, you can reach out to me and I can give you some info on, on how to make sure you get the right, right type of calcium. Um, best found in food. Of course. <laughs> Broccoli is a great source of calcium. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So let's go into a little bit, you know, oddly enough, I, I, I love chlorella, but for some reason, I, I meant, we mentioned, I mentioned this to you when, when we first met, but for some reason, spirulina, I, it just, it's just one of those things. It doesn't agree with me, but chlorella is like a superfood for me, but for some reason, the spirulina when I continue to take it, I just, I always just go back to chlorella. Yeah. Chlorella, I, I really feel, I really feel great with both spirulina. It's a different story. Yeah, everyone's different. Uh, and this is why it's so important to maybe try them in small quantities so that you get what you need. So we even have a product called Vitality Bits, which is a blend of the two of them. Some people prefer the spirulina, some the chlorella, some like it mixed. It's like some people like eggs and other people don't. It's, it's whatever you're, you need to pay attention to your body. Your body always knows what's good for you. You can muscle test. Muscle testing is when you can have someone do it for you or you can do it yourself and you hold something in your hand that's not good for you and you stick your other hand out and um, someone will press your extended arm down. And if the item that is in your other hand is not good for you, your hand, your arm will fall immediately. But if it's good for you, your arm will stay firm and it doesn't matter how much pressure they put on it, it will not bend. It's a really great way to, and if you can learn to do it yourself, you can do it with your hands in different ways. I'm a Reiki healer. So I, um, you know, I learned about that when I was learning to be a Reiki healer, but it's quite normal when you go to functional medicine, they often, it's called muscle testing. Uh, your body is so intuitive. And um, so, you know, some, some people, spirulina is just not good for them. But I will say that um, we still get, um, most people, I've never yet heard anyone tell me that um, they didn't, either one of them didn't pass the muscle test, ha test, but you need to pay attention to your body and uh, let that be your guide. So the chlorella obviously needs to, because of the cell wall, you were talking about how, how really incredible the cell wall is. So you, can you explain a little bit about how, how you make it digestible for, to get all the, the benefits? Yeah. Um, well, when, um, uh, 
years ago when you know the whole chlorella industry was you know very young and it was started in japan in the 50s um and they discovered because there is this hard cell wall that unless it was cracked your body couldn't absorb the nutrients that were inside the cell you could it would still pull out toxins but you couldn't get the nutrients so um this company called sun chlorella uh, which is the granddaddy of chlorella and i'm very grateful for them for doing it um, they developed a technique to crack the chlorella um, so that your body could absorb the nutrients. And what they did was um, tumble it with glass beads, um, which physically did, you know, crushed the, the cell wall. Now, remember, we're talking micro, micro algae, which is imperceptible to the eye. So you would never be able to see this you know, cracking process. But the trouble is that the glass heats up and lead from the glass leaks into the chlorella. Now, if it was just sun chlorella, you know, that would be one issue and problem with their product. But 95 or 99% of all chlorella companies use this very same technique that they patented. And so almost all chlorella on the marketplace has lead in it. And the you know, state of California tested it and blah, blah, blah. They had to put a warning on the packaging. So when I was starting the company, I learned that this could be a problem. And I thought there's gotta be another way to crack the chlorella because it's been, you know, it's been sold for 40 years. And sure enough, a new technique had just been developed and that's what we use. And uh, we pass our chlorella through a sound chamber and it's the vibrations that crack the chlorella. So there's no heat, definitely no lead. And it also keeps the, in, the um, nutrients more intact. So it's a much, safer process. Now, in North America, certainly in the United States rather, you cannot purchase any chlorella unless it is cracked, cell wall. It, so you don't have to ask somebody in America, is your cell wall cracked? Because it is. Uh, um, it's, you have to get it cracked for FDA approval. Now you go to other countries, they still sell uncracked cell wall chlorella which I don't understand because you, your body can't absorb it. Now you don't need to do this with spirulina because it has no cellulose wall. It is a bacteria. So it gets instantly absorbed so quickly. In fact, that when we first started, we were a sports nutrition company because all the runners and triathletes and Olympic athletes and actually NHL players discovered that it gave them energy and got into their bloodstream so quickly and it didn't upset their stomach because there's no carbs or sugar. So, um, but the chlorella, then they take the chlorella afterwards to pull it lactic acid so their muscles aren't sore the next day. But that's the story behind the cracked cell wall situation. Um, it's very, it, you know, that's, you know, chlorella is a very powerful food, not only because it's got all these rich nutrients, including the high chlorophyll, but it is one of the few things that can pull out heavy metals, lead, iron, um, by the way, aluminum for those who are getting vaccines, um, take some chlorella afterwards for sure to pull out the excess aluminum that will be in there. Uh, how, is alcohol, it, how is it doing that exactly? How is it pulling out toxins? Um, it's a good question. I've been trying to understand the process and I, um, uh, I've got a paper I wrote about how it identifies alcohol because your body converts alcohol to certain methane, whatever, and it identifies it as a toxin. It's, it's the strangest thing. Chlorella is, it's, it's, it's like combina it's like having an entire hospital packed into this little tiny cell. It just is a very, I call it intelligent food because you have to be intelligent to take it and it knows what to do in your body. And just as an example, that's why I can't explain it. They did some test, a scientist did some um, research because they, when you get chemotherapy, you know, all of your cells get damaged, not just the cancerous cells. So they did an experiment with chlorella and they injected it with the chemotherapy and the chlorella could find the cancer cell attached to the cancer itself and, and, and push the you know, medication into the, into the tumor. Didn't touch any other healthy cells. Mm. It's, it's, the strangest thing, it knows what to do in your body at, for anything. Um, and, but it is something, I, I, I wish I had more science about the actual yeah. uh, process because it's yeah. way, way better than activated charcoal, which a lot of people use. But the problem with activated charcoal is it pulls out all minerals. 
not just the bad, the bad toxins, it pulls out good things like calcium and magnesium. So you can end up being in uh, deficit of your electrolytes. Uh, and chlorella never does that. By the way, spirulina is cleansing. Has lots, so if you have any worries about detoxing, maybe spirulina is a better choice because it's cleansing because it still has chlorophyll, but it does not pull toxins out. Mm. Yeah, I came across years ago when I was first sort of fascinated with this. I came across some study, actually it was at UCLA, where they were measuring the, you know, the the urine for for toxins, and they clearly showed that you know it was it was definitely it was definitely pulling stuff out. Um, and they, I th I don't. This was years ago, but I don't remember even you know understanding exactly what was going on there. But, I don't think uh, anyone truly does. And and you yeah. know one of the reasons. I'd like to grow into a big company is that, so we could fund that kind of research and get more specifics. Because if, um, like, and I'll just give you an example, you know, we talked about spirulina being a blue green algae because there's two pigments in it. The green one, which we already talked about chlorophyll, but there's a blue one called phycocyanin that doesn't exist anywhere else in nature. Well, phycocyanin has, there's lots of research that's been done on it um, because it has lots of amazing healing properties. I'll just mention two. And this is all science-based and you can read some of the science on our website and go to lots of places and read about it. So it turns out that phycocyanin intercepts the COVID virus, which attaches to what's called your receptor cells um, and, and, and to in, you know, enter your body. It has to go through what's called a receptor cell. Well, phycocyanin acts as an intercept. It sits on the receptor cells and prevents the COVID virus from entering your body. Pretty sweet. In fact, there's a university, University of Pittsburgh pharmacology department has developed a COVID nose no spray based on algae because of this very principle. So that's really cool. They've mm -hmm. also found out that phycocyanin has what's called anti-angiogenesis properties. When, you're, when you have a tumor or a cancer, it basically hijacks your blood vessels and reroutes them to feed the cancer. Well, phycocyanin, for whatever reason, and it's a water-based pigment, by the way, intercepts that process and stops it. We didn't even know that. There's a big nonprofit based here in Boston, interestingly, called the Angiogenesis Association. It's angio.org, I believe, funded by Bill Gates, Bill Clinton, all the big bills. And uh, they were having a conference about five years ago, a global conference, and they said, did you know that your spirulina, spicocyanin stops cancer? Would you come and exhibit? We'll give you a free booth. <laughs> so I only mention this because there's so many other properties in algae that have not yet been explored or explained. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, there's, there's research, like there's 50,000, not five, not 500, not 5,000. It's just the massive amount of science that exists. There's probably some science about this somewhere, but I mean, I've, I've done my best. I've read like 2000 of them, but there's, you know, a hundred thousand. So, and I still have to run the company. So I, I can't, I haven't found it yet. Uh, it's probably there somewhere. Uh, yeah. And what, you know, maybe what about blood more. sugar? Does it have any effect on blood sugar? Oh, it's fantastic. That's why it's so great for diabetics. It balances your blood sugar. There are zero carbs. So um, uh, it's used for, um, you know, hypoglycemia, keto, diabetes. Where else can you get such great nutrition for one calorie? and zero carbs or sugar spike. And we've done tests with, with there's a company called Keto Mojo who often was at the same keto shows we were at and we would yeah. test people, their blood sugar and their ketones. Then we would give them some algae. Then we would test them a half an hour later. And sometimes their, their blood sugar actually went down. Hmm. I have research that shows that it's been you know studied for years about that. So, you know, it saddens me that, um, you know, the heart, Association and the Diabetes Association are still so reticent to embrace nutritional solutions like this one because it's so much better for you than drugs. <laughs> for sure, Sharon's asking if there are any contraindications to, to taking taking chlorella or spirulina. Zero for spirulina. You can give it to your newborns, and in fact, in Asia they do if they can't digest mother's milk. You, you can give it to your octogenarians. There is not a single person or a single reason that does, wouldn't benefit from spirulina. 
Now chlorella, including pregnant moms, nursing moms, chlorella, because it is a detox, um, will cause you to have some uh, detox symptoms, which could be a combination of headache or breakouts or stomach distress. It doesn't happen with everyone. It's only while you're detoxing and it's not the chlorella that's causing the problem. What it's doing is pulling toxins out. So anything you use as a medium to remove toxins will pull the toxins out of your cells. And while they're circulating in your blood, they're causing these reactions. Um, so that's so. So if you are sensitive, just be aware that that might be an outcome. Now, because medications very often have metals in them, like vaccinations, um, we don't want people not to benefit from their medications. So all we suggest is that you take the chlorella, the recovery bits, either two hours before or two hours after because on uh, your medication. The reason for the two hour window is because chlorella has that hard cell wall and it takes about an hour and a half, an hour, an hour and a half, but we say two just to be on the safe side, to clean out your blood. Um, and you can tell that this is how long it takes because if you have a couple of cocktails and you take some chlorella afterwards or wine, you will be sober in an hour and a half and, the, and you will never have a hangover because it, it, that's the chlorella pulling the alcohol out of your bloodstream. So it does the same thing for medication. So just take it you know, two hours before or after, but not with, uh, I have no proof that it interferes, but I'd rather be cautious uh, and, and observant of people's needs to, to contain, you know, take medications. Um, the only other thing I would mention, and I don't have an answer for this, um, is related to autoimmune. Now, chlorella and the chlorophyll in it and other nutrients stimulate your immune system. Now, I have not yet had a, a client tell me that they um, felt worse from uh, taking the chlorella um, in terms of their autoimmune, but, uh, and, uh, you know, most, uh, I, I encourage people to read a book by Dr. Stephen Gundry. I was actually on his podcast recently. He has a book called The um, Plant Paradox, and he doesn't directly talk about autoimmune, but, well, there's some of it. A lot of autoimmune, what's happened is um, your stomach lining has been come leak, leaky, you have a leaky gut. There's punctures from caused maybe by lectins or oxalates or something. And so then food gets through your stomach lining and into your bloodstream. And so your body starts attacking it and starts attacking itself. And so, and that is a, the, a major cause of autoimmune disease. So the first thing for autoimmune is you need to, you know, fix your leaky gut. You need to fix, and chlorella is used for that. Um, so, um, so I don't know whether, you know, I have not yet found a situation where it doesn't help people, but I just want, you know, because it does stimulate the immune system and people are very sensitive to the fact that they're already overstimulated. Um, I just want to point out that that may, um, it's just something you want to talk to your doctor about or just be cautious about. But other than that, um, uh, and again, pregnant moms could take it. People said, oh, well, what if the, it pulls out toxins? What if the mother's toxins get pulled out and go to the baby and it doesn't work that way? Whatever is happening to the mother is happening to the child um, in uh, the fetus. And so if there's toxins circulating, it will pull them out of the, from the baby as well. And they're finding there's so many toxins in the umbilical cords. So it'd probably be a good thing to be taking. <laughs> now, keep in mind, I am not a doctor. I am not allowed to give medical advice. I'm only sharing knowledge that I have acquired over the years. Uh, Dr. Karp is the doctor here. Um, and so just, you know, he, he's a better guide for you than I am. I'm just uh, kind of like a geek scientist <laughs> um, who's discovered something that seems to help a lot of people. And I just want to help share that information, but I am not a medical professional and continue to please work with your medical professionals or chiropractors or functional medicine. Most MDs know very little about nutrition, but I want you to you know, work with them um, on any journey you take with or without algae. <laughs> so how would you suggest people, you know, people start out if they've never taken it before? Would you, do you have recommendations on that? Yeah, so we, you know, we used to, when we first started, as I mentioned, we were a sports nutrition company and we were working with elite athletes 
like Olympic athletes. So we wanted them to feel the energy and we wanted them to get rid of their, you know, lactic acid. And so we kept increasing the amounts until we got to 30 tablets. And that's when they consistently felt the energy for the pre-workout from the spirulina. And they consistently felt the benefits from their muscles not being sore the next day when they took it afterwards. So that's how we got to 30 in, as a, in our single servings. And we used to recommend 30 tablets a day. Now, in the last five years, we, we, re, we pivoted, I guess is the expression, to becoming a consumer nutrition company. And most people are so undernourished that even if they took two or three tablets a day, or heck, even one if you want, one won't do a whole lot, but it's better than none, um, two or three tablets will start to give your body the nourishment that you're missing. Because remember that picture I showed you, one plate has the same nutrition um, one tablet has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables. So I always like to start small. Um, and so if you take two or three tablets in the morning when you get up and it doesn't satisfy your hunger, it doesn't give you energy, it doesn't give you focus like it should, then just take more until you find the number that works for you. Um, sometimes it will be different because if you're going on a long run, you might need 15 tablets to get you through a 10 mile run. Um, but I, I'd rather have people start small and not get overwhelmed because um, you know you don't even know that you're undernourished until you suddenly become nourished and you have energy and focus and and, and it's it's and eventually it becomes natural. So we've uh, we have we're actually changing the um, our sort of protocol tablet charts on our website hopefully tomorrow because uh, we had some for COVID and that seems to finally be disappearing. Um, so we sell uh, these little pouches with 30 tablets um, in boxes of 30. Uh, on our website, I don't think on Dr. Karp's website, you can buy them singles in as singles yet, um, but he could if he wanted to. We have a sample pack that includes one of each of our brands on our website. So you get one of each spirulina chlorella, or you could go to Amazon and buy them for four dollars each to try them out and very often that's what we recommend because we want people to feel comfortable not have to invest a huge amount until they are sure that they um it's doing what they you know we, we said it would and it will it just if it's not working it's just because you didn't take enough uh, and some people might have a sensitivity like you you don't like spirulina you, you know Phil, you only spent four dollars and found out you don't like spirulina it's not such a hardship and don't throw them away though, give them to your pets or somebody else if you can't use them. And same with chlorella, you, you know, $4 is a small investment. You do have to buy two at a time uh, to find out something that's so nutrient dense that it could be a game changer. And then either come back to our website or, uh, or the Miracle Noodle because they, they do sell them on the Miracle Noodle bags and boxes. We can do drop ship. Um, but, you know, play around with something small um, and we, uh, we ship to Canada, yes. And you, the question from Terry is, do you ship to Canada? I don't know whether Miracle Noodle ships to Canada, but we do. We ship uh, internationally. Uh, I'm actually Canadian, in fact. <laughs> Toronto born, and all my family's still in Canada. I can't have been able to see them since COVID, mind you. But um, uh, yes, we do ship, and we're trying to get on Amazon up there. We're trying to, you know, get into retailers, but it's a long process and. Um, it may not happen till next year, but but we do ship there pretty much every day. Yeah, I I mean I think that the you know as I said before the way the way I think of it is you know to start it in a small amount as a supplement, but then also to experiment using it in those situations where you know you you're going to reach for something probably you shouldn't shouldn't be eating. Um, you know, you've eaten enough food as you already know that, but you're still hungry. And then you take this and you're getting a, a super potent powered, you know, nutrient dense type of thing. So we do sell it on Miracle Noodle, as, as she said, we do have a coupon code for 10% off, uh, which is Wednesday night lot is WNL standing for Wednesday night live. Um, and if anyone has any other questions, let me know. But Wanted to thank Catherine. Uh, Catherine, you definitely have to switch from kelp noodles to miracle noodles. 
Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Oh, I, oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will do that. I will do that tomorrow. <laughs> but, but the, the reason is, is because, you know, you're, you're going to get, you know, one of the most potent prebiotic fibers on the planet in miracle noodles that you're not going to get, you know, from the kelp yes. noodles. So and I, I need that prebiotic. So yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and, and uh, that's a very good point. I'm so sorry to I mentioned that. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> oh, pa. <laughs> no problem. Well, we, we met at, as you mentioned, at the keto show. We were yeah. we were eating your miracle noodles every day, and my team came yeah. back. We were eating them every day, so we're we're big fans of miracle noodle, and um, uh, and it's it's good to understand the differences between these different types of noodles because sure, of course. um you don't understand um until you're yeah. informed no, kelp noodles are good they're you know they are crunchy so you they don't really feel like like noodles but you know they're 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 good as well there's lots of yeah. different options for people yes but it's a good point and yeah. um, I, I see i've got a canadian uh, person uh, uh terry selly yeah a a a <laughs> i'm trying not so, to use that <laughs> So thank you so much for uh, being our, our first guest uh, on episode 65. And, uh, you know, I, I hope this has been, you know, interesting for people. It's certainly one of the supplements I've taken for many, many years. And uh, I'm happy to be able to introduce it to people in, in, a, in a, such an educated way. So thank yeah. you so much. Well, it's, it's really great. I was on Shark Tank a few years ago and uh, Mark Cuban accused me of not being in love and with being of and being an entrepreneur and I, that I, he said you're just in love with algae and I said well if you knew as much about algae as I did you'd be in love with algae too so <laughs> I encourage you to continue to learn about it it's very very um, good for you more than any other food category in the world and uh, you'll start hearing more about algae very very soon so thanks for letting me share <laughs> yeah no thank you so much have a great night all right, you too. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, everyone. So next week, I'll be seeing you. Uh, we'll be talking about mental imagery and the use of mental imagery for uh, for optimal health and for um, getting your sort of uh, aims and ideas about how you want to achieve things, um, as well as you know uncovering certain things about your unconscious using mental imagery, as well as actually helping to diagnose or to understand your body better through through mental imagery. So we'll be talking about that next week. Um, and wish everyone a great night. Thank you so much for your attention and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.